Hi, thanks for purchasing my brush set. I'm just going to go over some of the things in that zip folder that you're probably wondering what they are, like the .grd and the .cube files. So a .grd is the gradients that you can load, as you see here up in my right hand corner. Uh, to load them, just go to your gradients in the window panel and go and say import gradients. Then you just simply load them right in. And we'll use these to color some of our scenes. Uh, the other thing is a .cube file, which is a lookup table, which is just essentially taking adjustment layers, such as hue saturation, vibrancy, and, and levels and curves, converting them, those as adjustments into a file that you can then import as color grading for other softwares. Uh, or, you know, in this case, we can import it into Photoshop as a preset and just import it in like this to give our scene a little bit of extra boost and some color grading. So to begin, you're also probably wondering why we have two marker sets. One marker being multiply, one being normal. I just give it because you click on it, it will always change to as the whatever mode is selected as the set. So I just gave two versions in case somebody wants to work with the normal, but I think most likely people are gonna be wanting to work with multiply since that imitates the marker feel. So to begin, if you wanna go and use try to use these gradient maps to color a scene, essentially what these will do will take a scene. So for example, we have this flat image, you see the color range in here, and it will convert it into a black and white so let's go to this little icon here to grab a gradient map, this little circle, and then right here, gradient map. And as you see, it says anything that is black values will be black, anything white values will be white. And it'll just essentially, it's just converting your scene to black and white, taking those values black to white, and then converting them to whatever you assign them to. So for example, if you want to change the black to red, and this white to cyan, it does that. It takes the whitest values, turns them to cyan, the darkest values turn them to red. And it works by doing this over it on top of everything. So if you obviously have this below, it works just like layers. Uh, so yeah, I found these gradient maps to be a very interesting way to add kind of like a pigmentation to your scene. So, We'll kind of just go over on how to use them. Because for example, if I create a scene and let's actually just go and just say, create a white and use one of the markers, just black on white. We can use a single gradient map to kind of create this more interesting dynamic color range for pigmentation. Whereas you zoom in, you can see it has almost like magentas around it, some blues just creating an ink that feels a little bit more interesting than just black and white. You want to attach this gradient map to the strokes. And the thing with this is that this black and white is not actually black and white. It's just black on transparency. And gradient maps don't read transparency, they read black and white. So we have to set up a scene to read this white value to this. So obviously we can have it just be like this and put a gradient map over the top. Or what we can do is actually put these into a group folder, say command G, call it color one, and then just take your gradient map and then command alt G to attach it on. And from there, you'll see that our background, which we have here, I just have a looping paper texture, which you can grab. It's completely seamless. Kind of, we have it in this case, it's just a little bit beige. If you turn this layer back on, you'll see that it is white because this white is covering everything. And if we take this off, you'll see that it is only attaching to this black belly. So we need the white, but we want it to be see-through. So we'll take this, this folder, the color one, not the gradient map, but the color one, and convert it to multiply. And now we took the ink and it just looked like it just multiplied right over the top as though like a normal marker did. And we can essentially do this for like other colors. So let's remove that.
take this, let's do another palette, say like blue. And you have to paint with black. You can't paint with like another color because if you paint with say like red, it's not gonna show up in red, this, this reads as black. So if you convert and you say like, oh, I want it to be actually red in here, it's gonna be blue because the red is being read as say a grayscale of around gray. And then saying whatever is the gray color will make it around this range. So just make sure that whenever you paint in these in these folders, it's just black and you're essentially separating each folder into a different color. So it's like this will be a blue color. This folder will be so color two will be like a blue color. Color one can be like this black color. Uh, and that's essentially it. It works really well for like graphical work, but if you want to do something more painterly, then yeah, maybe you just go with multiply and essentially just use the markers how you might intend them to be, you know, like that and something like this. And then you just take that layer and of course multiply it over the top. It's just maybe just not as dynamic of a color range, but still works. So quick sum up, take a layer, Fill it with white or even better, you can do a solid color layer in the adjustments panel, convert it to white, take the mask off. Do a new layer, you know, draw what you want with black, not a, a different color, only black. Put it into a group folder, label it, and then go back to your little circle, go to adjustment, the adjustment layer and say gradient map. Control Alt G because you want it to attach only to this color to these strokes that you've laid in. Grab the gradient gradient map and then load in the color that you want. And then the very last thing you want to do is then take the folder and say multiply. So keep this multiply this normal. And then you can just do whatever layers you want to do. Here, make this a little bit more bright. And the very last thing you can do is, of course, take this vibrancy that I created, which has some grain, some other things, and just kind of give it a little bit more boost of color if you want to. But that's really it. Have a good one.